The cell is the smallest unit of life. All living things, plants, insects, animals, human beings, we are all made up of trillions of cells working together to create a complete and complex organism. Let's take a look at the makeup of a cell. Just like we have organs in our body, cells have tiny organs called organelles that allow the cell to carry out basic functions. Each cell operates like a small community with the different organelles performing specific jobs to keep the cell alive. Cellular energy is needed for every life function. Cellular nutrients that we get through food and nutritional supplements like vitamin tablets provide the main sources of energy that our cells need to allow the body to carry out functions like walking, talking, eating, and breathing. Cellular nutrients are a combination of macronutrients like proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, and micronutrients like vitamins, minerals, trace elements, and amino acids. Cells convert these nutrients into energy through a process called metabolism. The production of this bioenergy takes place in organelles called mitochondria, which are the power plants of the cell. Proper nourishment of our cells allows our bodies to grow and stay healthy. Our body's health is decided at the cellular level. When our cells do not have the essential nutrients to perform their basic functions, we become nutrient deficient. Nutrient deficiency over extended periods of time causes the cells to malfunction. When cells do not function properly, over time this can lead to disorders of the various systems that make up the entire human body. In addition to cellular nutrients nourishing the cells to enable us to carry out basic functions of life, cellular nutrients also support stability of the connective tissues in our body. In this picture, we take a look at the inside of a bone. Looking at the inside of this bone under a microscope, we see collagen fibers. These collagen fibers are produced with the help of vitamins. The more healthy collagen fibers that are produced, the better stability our body tissue will have. In addition, vitamins can also allow our bodies to fight off foreign invaders like cold and flu viruses and protect us against free radicals which have damaging effects on cells and organs in the body. There are many things that put a higher demand on the amount of nutrients that our bodies need. Some of these are easily understandable, such as the need for more micronutrients in children during the growth phase, women during pregnancy, athletes, and of course adults in the second half of life. There are also other factors that require higher than normal levels of micronutrients, such as digesting heavily processed foods, smoking, taking many prescription medications, and during times of high stress. When the demand for these essential things that the body needs is not met, the body signals us in different ways. When your body has a deficiency of air, you suffocate. When you are deficient in food, you feel hungry. When your body has a deficiency of water, you become thirsty. There is an important thing that you need to know about micronutrients. Your body does not give you a warning signal when it is deficient in micronutrients. Unfortunately, signs that the body is nutrient deficient can take months or even years to manifest themselves. You need to know to prevent nutrient deficiency. The difference between cellular medicine and conventional medicine is that cellular medicine focuses on health at the smallest level of life, at the cellular level. Conventional medicine focuses on health at the level of the organs. However, the basic new understanding is that health and disease is determined at the level of cells. A malfunction at the level of the organ is normally an indication that something is malfunctioning at the cellular level. Cellular medicine goes deeper than conventional medicine by focusing on health at the cellular level because we now know that healthy cells promote healthy organ function and healthy organ function promotes a healthier body. 
Let's take a look at some illnesses that can occur over long periods of time as a result of nutrient deficiency. Atherosclerosis, the formation of deposits or plaques in the arteries, is the underlying cause of heart attacks. The damage done by nutrient deficiency that can lead to atherosclerosis normally takes decades to become apparent. Over decades of nutrient deficiency in the cells that make up the blood vessels, the blood vessel walls begin to weaken and develop cracks if the cells continue to go undernourished. In the image on the left, we see an atherosclerotic plaque that has formed inside the blood vessel wall. The plaque makes it harder for blood to pass easily through the small opening. The symptom of this reduced blood flow over time is angina, a severe constricting pain in the chest. Over time, the plaque will continue to grow and the opening will continue to get smaller until eventually the artery will be totally blocked by a blood clot. This is what we see in the picture on the right. This is a heart attack. So what about cholesterol? Cholesterol and other fatty molecules are in our bloodstream all the time. You are told that high cholesterol causes heart attacks. If this were true, and since cholesterol is in our bloodstream all the time, wouldn't we get clogging of our arteries all along the blood vessel pipeline, not just in the heart? And if this were true, shouldn't we also get nose attacks and ear attacks too? Cholesterol is a waxy, sticky substance carried in the bloodstream as complex molecules called lipoproteins. Lipoproteins bind to the cracks in damaged blood vessels to help stabilize them, like mortar in a brick wall. As the body secretes higher amounts of cholesterol to repair the damaged blood vessel wall, the repair mechanism overshoots and the cholesterol molecules accumulate forming plaques on the damaged blood vessel wall. Atherosclerosis starts with a chronic deficiency of the nutrients in the millions of cells that make up the artery wall. The deficiency leads to cracks and instability in the artery wall. When this happens, the body sends the alarm signal to the liver to release higher amounts of cholesterol into the bloodstream to repair the damage. The picture presented here summarizes that new understanding of the origin and control of cardiovascular disease by natural means. From this explanation, we can understand how nutrient deficiencies are connected to events like heart attacks and strokes, not the mere presence of high cholesterol alone. Elevated cholesterol and blood fat levels are not the cause of heart attacks and strokes, but a consequence of long-term nutrient deficiency. This explanation also explains how blockages in the circulatory system can lead to other complications in the body. Let's take a look at another common chronic condition, high blood pressure, which is closely related to cardiovascular disease. Here we see thickening of the blood vessel wall that can occur when the artery wall cells become deficient in essential nutrients. Micronutrient deficiencies over time can lead to spasm and thickening of the blood vessel walls. This can cause high blood pressure until the problem is corrected. Let's take a look at another frequent condition, heart failure. The heart is the motor of our body. It pumps about 100,000 times a day. It is easy to understand how so much pumping requires a lot of energy. The production of this energy requires micronutrients. The primary cause of heart failure is a deficiency of the micronutrients that play a vital role in the bioenergy production in our heart muscle cells. This bioenergy is needed to support the heart muscle cell's ability to sustain a strong and stable heartbeat. When the heart cells do not have these essential nutrients, the body warns us with symptoms like shortness of breath, fluid retention, and swelling in the body, and a lack of stamina, to name a few. Type 2 diabetes is a disease that is characterized by the body not being able to produce or utilize enough insulin to control the amount of the sugar or glucose in the blood. 
a type 2 diabetic metabolism can be triggered by chronic nutrient deficiency in the cells of the pancreas, which produces the hormones that regulate blood sugar levels. In diabetes, the primary cause of diabetic circulatory problems, you might have guessed by now, is also micronutrient deficiency. The illustration seen here shows how diabetes triggers cardiovascular complications, such as heart attack, stroke, and kidney failure. Diabetes can also cause the destruction of small blood vessels and can lead to other complications like gangrene and even blindness. Conventional medicine mostly focuses on treating the symptoms of diabetes, like using medication to artificially reduce the blood glucose level. This is not a treatment of diabetes, just a temporary control of its symptoms. Cancer The most common cause of death from cancer is metastasis, the spreading of cancer in the body. Regardless of what type of cancer we are talking about, all cancer cells use the same tool to spread, enzymes. The cells in our body produce enzymes naturally. There are hundreds of different types of enzymes in the body that are necessary for specific biochemical reactions, such as breaking down food. Another type of enzyme is used by a cell to aid in destroying itself after it is reproduced so that the new healthy cell can take its place. Cancer cells secrete special collagen digesting enzymes. Collagen is a major component of the connective tissue that provides stability and support in our bodies. The red Pac-Man looking symbols in this picture represent a specific type of collagen digesting enzyme secreted by a cancer cell. When a cell becomes cancerous, it replicates itself uncontrollably and does not die. It also secretes these special collagen digesting enzymes, which act as biological scissors to cut through the connective tissue surrounding the cell and allow it to spread through the tissue and invade other parts of our body. The more enzymes that the cancer cell produces, the more malignant or aggressive the cancer cell will be and the shorter the patient's life expectancy. In this slide, we see micronutrients like vitamin C and lysine blocking the collagen digesting enzymes produced by cancer cells and helping to strengthen the connective tissue to prevent cancerous cells from spreading. Neither lysine nor vitamin C is produced in our body. We've covered just a handful of chronic conditions that can occur when our cells are nutrient deficient over time and how micronutrients play a critical role in promoting overall health and wellness. So now we come to a very important aspect of natural health and the importance of micronutrients. It is the secret behind how micronutrients work together to promote good health and proper functioning of our cells. We named a few different micronutrients in the course of this presentation, but the secret to optimum human health does not lie in providing large amounts of any one micronutrient in particular. No, the secret lies in synergy. Nature operates on the combined effort of things working together at the same time. We call this synergy. Think of an orchestra. If we take one instrument from the orchestra, or even a row of violins, and they play a set of notes, it will produce a certain sound, and that sound may be nice. When we put them together with a group of different instruments, they can produce a powerful and beautiful sound that you cannot produce using just one instrument. Micronutrients operate the same way in a cell. In order for a cell to be healthy and perform at its best, large amounts of one nutrient at a time may be helpful, but will not make up for having a deficiency in another nutrient. It will not be as powerful as giving the cell specific nutrient combinations in balanced proportions that allow certain functions to take place, unlocking the power of nutrient synergy. Just like an orchestra sounds best when there is synergy between the instruments to create beautiful music, Cells work best when there is synergy between nutrients, combinations of specific micronutrients in specific proportions working together to bring about optimum performance in the cell. 
We're just about at the end of this presentation, but first meet the team who has pioneered this new understanding of cellular health. Founded by Dr. Matthias Rath and headed by Dr. Alexandra Nidzwicki, the Dr. Rath Research Institute in Santa Clara, California, has been a leader in the emerging field of science-based natural health for over a decade. The research team of the Dr. Rath Research Institute has published numerous research articles in the most respected scientific journals and given presentations at prestigious international medical conferences. If you would like to learn more about the Institute and their work, please visit www.drrathresearch.org. The Institute also has a strong research focus on some of today's most common diseases, including cardiovascular disease and cancer. These findings can be summarized in the popular books, Why People Get Heart Attacks But Animals Don't, and Victory Over Cancer. We have reached the end of this short educational presentation. We hope that the information you learned will benefit you and those you love. If you have any questions, please ask the store personnel, and they will be happy to assist you. We are convinced that if this knowledge is shared with people in communities around the world, we will reach our goal of health for all by 2020.